Afternoon, friends, or should I say good evening? It is about half past four in the afternoon. It's already getting dark. Clocks went, when did we, did we go forward? Clocks went forward yesterday. Hello, Ross, this is my dog. He's just come say hello. Go and sit down a minute, we're out in a minute. Very, very quick video before we lose the light, and I have to move over to my nighttime bench behind me, which has got the better spotlight. I just want to introduce this beautiful guitar to you because it's the next project on the bench. And this is a Ross, go and sit down. Good boy. This is a beautiful thing, and look at it. And it's a PRS, and it's a USA, and it's a studio, and looking at those inlays, it's probably a deluxe. Uh, fantastic looking thing. It's coming for a setup and a little bit of, it's gonna have a pot change. We're gonna put a push push on there, not a push pull. There's nothing, diff nothing great about having to pull a pot up to get it to split a coil or whatever it does. I always preferred push push, because it's just a matter of whacking it, Whack it again, really easy, no faffing about, really quick. So we're gonna put a push, push pot in there. Um, we're gonna give it a setup. we're gonna check everything. I'm also gonna plug it in and play it, because I like that. What a beautiful, beautiful looking thing this is. And like I say, I'm not sure, exactly sure of the model. I'm sure I've got it written down in my booking in book, but I've not picked my booking in book up for a day or two. So, and I can't be bothered to open it up now. So uh, I've just messaged Russ, who this guitar belongs to. Asked him what model it is. It's a beautiful looking thing. The tremolo is set right. So whoever set this up before knows what they are doing. Pickups wise, there's a name on there. Or well, there's something on there. Summit trademarked, 57 stroke O, is it 08? And TM. I have to find out about that. Um, some beautiful mini humbuckers in there as well. Fantastic looking thing, look at it, my goodness. As if, when it comes to guitar colour, tobacco sunburst or derivatives of or similar have always been my favourite uh, style and favourite colours. If I had anything, it would most likely be either pure white, arctic white or tobacco sunburst. What a beautiful looking thing. I just had a little twang about on it. It plays great. Uh, the nut probably needs a little bit of attention, but not too much by the looks of that. The frets certainly need cleaning and polishing. I do know we're going to change that part, but that said, I can't see much else wrong with it. It obviously needs a new set of strings. So I'm thinking just to set up, change that part over, polish the frets, restring it, job will be a good one. I just wanted to introduce it for now while we've got the light. Um, like I say, I've got, I'm, going to nip, I'm just going to nip out 10 minutes. I'm going to take the dog for a walk. Um, while my wife's at work, she's working, she's working till six tonight. So I'm going to take dog for a walk, when I'm going to come back, we're going to have a night light on, I'm going to be over on the other bench, we're going to have a good look at this, uh, we're going to have a good look at the electrics inside, we're going to see what sort of pots I have in stock. Um, there's something else I need to do with this, can't remember, it could come back to me in a bit. So anyway, stay tuned, quick introduction, you've now seen the guitar, if there's anything I need to add, I will add in the next section, once I've heard back from the owner, he can put me straight on what model it is. Serial number on the back, it starts 11, and there's a gap, then it's got one, two, three, six digits. It's also got a 10 in the top right corner. So I'm thinking the 11 stands for 2011. We have open gear tuners. I'd imagine they are something really solid, this being a, an American model. Uh, I'm not gonna guess what they are. Uh, no point in doing that. They are probably hip shot looking at those. I don't know if Hipshot do that button style, but Hipshot certainly do the 90 degree screw angle and the open gear. Could also be, would they be Gravers or Charlas? I'd have thought if they were anything like that, it would say on there. If there's no name on there, I would be guessing at Hipshot. Just a wild guess. Um, I'm not certain on that. Pretty standard PRS type bridge, six screw affair. Pickups, no idea. Certainly a custom bridge pickup. I would say custom pickups all round. Beautiful satin finished tremolo arm, just a nice touch again. Nuts on these, never impressed me the nuts. This nut is cut more deep slotted. I don't like deep slotted nuts myself, but because that's a style, I'm gonna leave it like that. If I do need to alter anything there, I will do. The intonation will be checked. The radius on the saddles will be checked. Um, of course, we'll check the neck, we'll check the truss rod's working, which I'm absolutely sure it will be. All the electrics will be given a going over. May have to squirt a bit of service oil in there just to clean any cracking up. If there is any, I doubt there is. The truss rod itself will be a nut type affair. I already have the, the tool I need for that. Uh, PRS is just quality, brilliant. 
PRS, I believe, in my mind, I'm a big Hamer guitar fan, always I've been Hamer since the 80s. I think PRS took over where, where Hamer left off, if you know what I mean. Hamer didn't really left off, it was just bad, bad management. Uh, no great sponsorship deals, no, no great, not so many, many great artists on their books, but they could have gone better. I think Hamer tried to, tried to cater for everyone too much and they should have really stuck to what they were really good at, which unfortunately was everything and it ended up not being right for them. But PRS, American PRSs, wow. I don't think I've even had a bad PRS import in. They can be a little bit squiffy on the frets. I have had a couple of PRS Mark Holcombs myself. Well, I've owned one. I've had a few in here. Lovely, lovely guitars, but these American ones, wow, they are they're spectacular. But anyway, I'm gonna crack on. Dog's laying down there looking at me, gone out, going here, taking me for a walk or what? Look at look, it's dark. Dog thinks it's seven o'clock at night, look. Look at him, God bless him. Hello, Ross. Come say hello to the people up here, look. Come here. Come here. Who's this? This is Ross, my dog. He's American Bulldog Cross. He's a beautiful boy. And we go for a walk. I will be back later. So, given this guitar the once over, I have checked the setup. The setup is really pretty good. We've got a nice action above the first fret on the string, so the nut slots are okay. I don't like the way PRS cut their nuts, but that's another story. We'll talk more about that later. So, I've had it plugged in. I've listened to all the... Um, different variations on the switch on the switching I'm thinking this I don't know exactly what this push pull does it seems to certainly split this humbucker if indeed it is a humbucker if it's not a humbucker then it probably splits the coil uh, rather than uh, or it taps the coil rather than splits it I'll have to do some digging and find out something else I don't know I'm not certain what model this is um, looking at the inlays the inlays would kind of tell me that it may be either a deluxe or a custom I don't really think it's a custom I think it's Everything on this is standard, but I don't know. I've not been able to find any information on this online. The owner of the guitar doesn't know the specific exact model. He just knows that it's a studio. So I'm able to do a little bit more digging. Standard PRS type tremolo, as mentioned before. Mini split, mini or mini humbuckers in these two positions. Uh, this certainly only seems to work on the bridge pickle. I couldn't notice any variation on the middle or the middle of the neck together when I was pushing and pulling, I don't know. So, what I've checked with this is, I've checked the action. The action's really low on this, low at the 12th fret, which is brilliant. There's no buzz anywhere, which is fantastic. I've not checked the frets yet, I'm gonna do that in a minute. Scale length on these, PRS love to keep you guessing. It's a 25 inch scale length on these. I knew it was that because I've got to 25 inch scale length. Uh, not straight edge there and there you go and i'm going to check the frets in a moment uh, but i can't check the frets properly because the neck is not straight there is some relief in there i always like to see about a quarter of a millimeter under fret nine and it's a little bit over so that explains why the action is so low because we've got a lot of relief in there i am inclined to leave that relief in there and keep the action low because then you've got it's much easier to play up the top end if I straighten this neck a little bit like I normally do and add less relief and I'd really certainly have to raise the action of the strings, bring them a little higher, otherwise we're going to get some fret buzz. I'm thinking if Russ is happy with this playing the way it is, I'm going to leave it just like that. Uh, no reason to change anything. I will message him in a minute and find out. So the setup, setup wise, it doesn't really need a lot doing. I'll be checking the intonation and I'll be setting the radius on the saddles. Um, I'll also be setting this tremolo properly. We'll get it perfectly level. We'll get it pulling back and pushing forwards, perfectly floating. Um, I'll be resetting these screws. So it is having a setup or a, an intensive setup. I'm also replacing this push pull pot with a push push, as I did in the other guitar of Russ's. Push push is there. I'm going to be doing that next. So what I'm going to do is, as I always do, I'm going to get inside the circuit, have a look around, draw myself a little map so I know what does what. Uh, I'll colour code the wires myself as well, just so I know that, because I don't know what this switching exactly does, I'll draw myself a little map so I know where each wire goes. I will then reverse engineer the wires on the pot, I'll remove them all and I'll put the new pot in and um, all being well, if I've done my job right, everything will work as it should. So what I want to do now while you're here is, can you see all of the neck? Not quite, let me just, there you go, that's lovely. I'm gonna loosen the strings. 
And with the strings being loosened, that relief should, we should lose that, lose that relief and the neck will straighten out. It means I can go across with a fret rocker. So we can check these frets. I'll be thinking on such a high end and expensive guitar, these frets will be all right. Normally PRSs are fine. It doesn't mean to say that there won't be any higher frets. I'm hoping they're on because I'm not charged for any and I haven't really got time to do a complete fret level on there. Okay, we'll still have a little bit of relief. Uh, I should oink out. I'll remove the trunk. There you go, trust one cover. We need to certainly sort that out because that screw is just spinning and not coming up. It means it's not biting to anything. That's a bit gay. Not gay, but a bit rubbish. Okay, let's try and get something under there to pull it up. If we get something in it, there you go. Okay, there we are certainly going to, I'll fill that hole with something. Maybe a little bit of dowel or a little bit of uh, cocktail stick or something in there. We'll glue something in there. And it means we'll have something that not to bite on, or that screw to bite on. Okay, should be a Round about an 8mm adjuster nut there. I will have one. Just a sachet full of them. We're going to need the big one. 8mm. It's going to be an 8mm, I think. I think that is Russ. Is that going to go in there? Almost. Okay, I can't get that in there, so I hope he's got one in the bag, because if he hasn't, I can't adjust it. 2.25, is that a, oh, hang on, this might be the one. Oh, yes. That one fits right in there, that's a proper one. So let's loosen it off, just straighten the neck. I'm hoping it's going to straighten the neck, it should do. straight around that. I've got a really really busy day uh, which is fantastic news after the month I just had but here you go here you go I was going the wrong way with the truss rod right that's fine right that neck is straight that's beautiful so a quick whiz across with a fret rocker my trusty GMI which is the best fret rocker I've ever owned So far so good. These frets are bang on. Why can't we do this on your import guitars? Those frets are bang on. They are level, no rock anywhere. That is great news. So it means I don't have to touch the frets. I will polish in them. And I will also um, be treating the fingerboard. Just bear with me a second. Just check in a message from Ross, the owner of this guitar. Yeah, it says the same as me. Uh, I just don't know why push push doesn't come standard. Exactly the same. Push push makes so much more sense. Let me show you. It's fantastic. All you've got to do with a push push is just push it in, push it out. You could just dob it like that. Just fantastic. So simple. I have converted all of my guitars that had push pull parts to push push. It makes so much sense. Anyway. Frets are good, the setup is pretty much bang on. Uh, don't need to do a lot there, it just needs a good clean. Um, it will need, obviously we're gonna change the pot, sort the electrics out, give it a good clean, polish everything up, and I will slightly tweak the way the bridge is set up. We may have to tweak a little bit of the intonation, but that is pretty much it, pretty standard um, fare, really. Uh, I am thinking of going just with a little bit less relief, on the neck, we will wait and see. I'm going to ask Russ in a minute how it plays and how he likes the setup. And if he likes the setup as it is, I don't see why I'd have to change much on that. It certainly needs a good deep clean though. So I'm going to crack on. Um, like I say, I'm going to do the pot first. So I'm going to get my saw dry now. We're going to remove this pot. I'm going to draw a little diagram. And we are going to crack on and get it done. 
So it looks pretty simple. We have a pot there with basically one, two, three wires and a, I don't know if it's a transistor or a probably capacitor on there. Uh, that looks pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do is just draw out a little diagram. And we're going to go one, two, three terminals there, six terminals on there. Really simple. I'm just looking at where I am. Right, where are we? This terminal goes to earth on the volume pot. VE, volume earth. Two, this goes to the big, whatever it is. Let's go to the middle lug. Volume two. White wire, it's just a white wire going on the bottom lug. Really simple. And this one is going to be this big capacitor which goes down to lug. Doesn't go anywhere, it goes to earth. So it goes to earth on the back of the pot. Then this earth goes to look through with a black wire. That may not make any sense to anyone at all but me. But I know exactly what all that means. I'm also going to grab me a picture or two. It means I'm not going to mess this up. Where are we? Take me some pictures. Great. Bring this out. I really can't go wrong with this, can I? Got some great pictures there. Make sure that is out of the way of there because I need that to go on look two, not look one. And there you go, really can't mess that up. So I know where everything goes, I'm going to desolder everything, uh, get it all back in, get the new pot in there, and I'll come back and show you the results when they are done. So I think we can safely say that the Push Porsche, it's now a Push Push by the way, I've installed it, is a coil split on the bridge pickup. I've just tuned this into a drop D, or, or just a drop tuning, not a drop D, drop anything. working it seems tone working so there we go that is let me just show you inside it's all done so we can get the back back on there that is finished we're going to move on now to the setup the only bad thing about this time of the year is we are losing the light and uh, there's not a lot I can do about that so I'm going to work on my main bench, even though the light's not very good. You've just seen I had the body covered up there, just so I don't spill any oil or spray any oil on the guitar. And we're just going to work some oil into the frets, not into the frets, into the fretboard. I'm going to let it soak in 15, 20 minutes or 5, 10 minutes, whatever, just to re uh, lift up any grime and to nourish the wood. And while that's doing its thing, I'm going to polish the frets. Before I polish the frets, I'm going to cover all of the pickups because we don't want any uh, filings. Because I'm going to be using steel wool, we don't want any steel wool filings getting into the pickups. So what we do is we we'll protect the pickup. Got some Scotch 3M low tack tape here. Been using this for years. And we're covering the pickups. It's 
I could not use um, steel wool. But what else would I use? So there we go, we have the pickups protected. I'm not going to get any iron filings in there. I'm going to work this in right up to the frets. I will actually take a rag or a cloth, which I've already had some oil on there, on the corner. I'll give that a quick spray. And I'll also spray my thumb, as you just saw there. Then we'll work plenty of oil in there. And we'll let that do its stuff. I'll move the camera down, give it a better angle. Well, it's not so bad, it's not terrible. There you go, see a little bit more now. I'm going to polish the frets, just turn off the volume on my phone. So it doesn't. interrupt anything. Right, so okay, so we are now ready to polish the frets. The frets don't need levelling. Being a crossway fret rocker, check the frets, they are fine as I would expect them to be on a USA PRS. So we're going to get the, uh, call them fret cords, but they're not the fingerboard cords really. These gubbins, you know what they are? One for up, for up the top end, one for down the bottom end there. And we're going to take some steel wool, some fresh steel wool, unused. All there is, I'm just going to roll it and I'm just going to polish over the beveled edges. Just remove any grime or anything that's stuck in there. And that's it. And polishing the frets is no more difficult than just Put the guard on. We'll put the guard on because we don't want to put scratches in the wood. And we certainly don't want to put scratches in the wood that way. That way we'd get away with it. But we're not going to put any scratches anyway. And it's just a matter of holding the fret guard. You can't see it. Let me see if I can hold it with one finger there. I think I can. There you go. And it's just polishing over the whole fret. Nice and firm. Pinching. Around like so. Really, really easy. And this is just going to remove any tarnishing, any grime, any slime from the frets. Doesn't take long. We're going to let that oil soak in 5-10 minutes. I'll wipe it off with a cloth. And I think the wood will be nice and clean. The wood will be treated. Call it lemon oil. It's not lemon oil, it's mineral oil. Specially formulated for guitar fingerboards, especially with dark, well, with dark wood varieties such as ebony, power ferro, rosewood. Treats the wood, lifts out the grime. I recommend you do this at least once a year, maybe even twice a year, once every six months. Don't leave it on too long. You don't need it soaking right in. But don't, you know, don't just pour it on and wipe it off like some people suggest. There's no point doing it. All right, here we go. Polishing the frets. Not difficult at all. With the push push pot now installed and working correctly, all I really need to do with this is set it up. Now the setup is pretty much bang on. Anyway, I've talked to the owner. Uh, he's quite happy with the way it plays. So I'm going to go with more relief than we'd normally have, um, which is how he likes it set up. It means we can have a lower action up this top end. So that's how I'm going to set it. I'm going to leave the action, the nut slots as they are, because if you ever need to alter the action here, these strings are going to drop down a bit lower to the nut. There's a tiny smidgen higher than I would like. Them. That's because we've got more relief in this end. Of the neck. So I'm going to leave that where it is. The guitar plays in perfect tune. It's not going out of tune when we finger an F or an F sharp or a G chord, which is normally the case if the slots aren't deep enough. So I'm happy that the slots in the nut are deep enough. I'm not a great fan of our PRS cut these nuts because they've got a deep slot. Uh, that's just my personal preference. I don't like it like that, but that's how it is. So I'm going to leave it like that. This is all purely Western cosmetic, but it's also good to give your guitar a clean anyway. It's like a spring clean for your guitar. You should always do this, especially when you change the strings. Give it yourself, won't take you long. 
every nut and bolt will be tested and checked and tightened where needed. I like quite like these tuners. They look a bit ugly, but they work well. I'm going to show you now when I string this guitar, I'm going to show you how I string it. I don't put the string, just pull the string through, pull it taut and tight. No, I actually give it a half turn first because then it gives you, because then if you wait tighten the string, it's not going to snap on the corner. If you snap on the corner, you've got nothing left. Your string's gone and you have to replace it. So I like to just bring off a turn and loop in this way. Then I tighten that up and bring it around. So you get a little bit of a wind anyway. Something I've always kind of done. But then again, I've snapped lots of strings. So there you go. So give us another five minutes. Let that soak in. Just wipe away if there's any filings here. We're going to do it all in a short while anyway. So it should be a nice easy setup on this. I will have to set the tremolo up from scratch. Um, good thing about it is the intonation's good. I've already checked that. I've not checked the radius yet. Shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't really be out, but we'll have a look anyway. The owner likes the tremolo set up as it is as well. A bit of icky on there. Don't know what that is. It could be a little ding. Yeah, kind of a ding in there. It's not scratching off anyway, so. What else? It's a nice simple one to wrap up my week. It's Friday afternoon. It is, I don't know what time it is. It's just coming up to 4 p.m. And uh, get a little bit dusky out there. I'm going to give this five minutes. I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. I've had no lunch yet today because I've been working to get these done. But once this is all I'm going to make a cup of tea. Once I made a cup of tea, I'm going to come back, peel off this tape. We're going to wipe the fingerboard down. We're going to get some strings on and we're going to set the tremolo and the radius on the saddles. Okay, boys and girls, the strings are on and we are going to set the tremolo. Now, I'm going to set this tremolo the way I set a tremolo. I'm not saying it's the definitive way, the only way or the right way. What I'm saying is this is the way I do it. Um, I'm just going to go and grab a screwdriver, which is great. Right, so what I do is I set the two outside screws as the tremolo pivots because that's what they are. I'm just going to move these business cards. Give me a second. You'll see the tremolo pulls right back to the body. And these two outside screws are going to be the pivots for the tremolo. Now, the reason I've stuck these business cards there is that is how I set the tremolo. It's how I set the level or I set it floating. What I do is once I've got this straight with the business cards underneath here like that, then I come and tighten these two claw springs and bring them right up. And that now means the tremolo is locked in position it's pulled back harder than it needs to be and we can now tune the string or tune the guitar and set the tune in and once that's done really really easy to set it, set it in tune we set it all up we stretch the strings then we remove the business cards what happens is the springs pull the tremolo back everything comes sharp and what we do is we turn it upside down we loosen these two claw screws until maybe we'll pick the A string once the A string is in tune and these come out the same amount it just follows that all the other strings are in tune. That is how I set a tremolo. The most important thing to do with a floating tremolo is to make sure that this is horizontal, or as horizontal as you want it to be. We are a little bit lower down that side than we are this side because these strings are closer to the frets, this string is, than these are. We have a lower action and a higher action. So that's pretty self-explanatory. So now what I'm gonna do is with everything set as I like, and the screws, uh, the claw spring screws are now in, we can set the guitar or tune the guitar. And for that I'm going to need a guitar lead, which I have, and a tuner, which I also have. Shooby, dooby, do. Now I've already checked that the intonation have I checked the intonation? Yeah, I've checked the intonation's right. Um, I've not checked it, it's in tune yet, because I've not tuned it now. I'm thinking this was in E flat when I got it, but he wants it tuning into E standard. So we needed the tremolo resetting from scratch anyway. So I'm going to bring, get somewhere close.
strings. We're going with D'Addario 1046s or XXL 110s, I believe. Right, so we are more or less in tune. We're not properly in tune because I haven't stretched the strings. But what we're going to do is we are going to check the relief first in the neck. So let's go with it's a 25 scale, surely. That's the one. Well, I know it's a 25 because I've already measured it. So we're going to have a look at the relief. We've got hardly any relief in there at all. Let me get my feeler gauge. I'm going 0.3 millimetres under the seven fret. That is quite high, but it is how the owner of this guitar likes it. He says he wants me to set it up how it was before because he liked the action, he liked the way it played. And if we have more relief here, it means the strings are closer to the fingerboard at this end. And I understand that it makes lead playing a lot easier. Okay, that's pretty good. Oh, we're actually pretty good there. Let me look again. Just going to shine a light under there just so I can see a little bit better. A light. Let's just see where we are. Oh yeah, that's quite a big gap. Okay. a little bit more than I would like. I'm just going to tighten the truss rod adjuster. Do I have my tool for that? Certainly do. Do the quarter turn. I need an 8mm wrench. Is that an 8mm wrench? Whatever. It's this one. I know it's this one. So we're just going to give it a little turn. So there you go. We're going to go maybe there. About a fifth of the turn. Okay, so with 9 fret, 0 0.3 is pretty good. That is just about right, it's just moving, but not straight edge. So we're going to go there. We'll take a little bit of tweaking. Check the tuning again. So I'm going to stretch the strings in, I'm going to check the, uh, the amount of relief again, I'm going to check the height, the string height, about the 12 fret, we were pretty low before, about 1.4, 1.5, I've got my tools away, bear with, okay, string action gauge, where art thou, it was out, it is out somewhere, right that's whooping it, brilliant, I will find that off camera, and uh, in fact, you know what, I'll use the uh, Imperial one, I'll use the Stumac one. I know where we need to be, so let's have a quick look at the action of the 12 fret. Anywhere around about 0 0.7 is good, or 0 0.07, we're at 0 0.05, that is really, really low. Super low, a lot lower than it was. So we're getting fret balls everywhere, so we certainly need to bring the action up a little. I wonder if that tremolo is set right. Bear with me, I'll get that tremolo reset. I'm thinking we're a little bit low down here. Um, somehow I need to just get that moving up. I'm wondering if I can do it on a screwdriver. People say you shouldn't leave that under tension. You know, you're probably right, I'm not worried about it. Let me get this set up off camera. And I will come back and we'll make the necessary, once made the necessary adjustments here, we'll come back and we'll have a look at this again. So, not thinking straight, I realise that these bridges could well be factory set, so you can't alter it up or down anyway, but 
I need to adjust the saddles. Now I've adjusted the saddles, 1.3 millimeter Allen wrench, and I've bought these two, the outside strings, the high and the low, to the heights I would like. And I've set this with the right amount of relief in the neck to 1.25 millimeters above the 12 fret, and this one to 1.5 millimeters. I've been playing the neck up and down, there's no buzz anywhere, so it's a nice low action. But what I need to do is I need to set the uh, radius on the saddles. And I'm thinking this is probably a 12 inch radius. I've not checked it. I'm going to check it right now. So let's have a quick glimpse. Glasses off for of this. Okay, it looks pretty much close to 12. I'm going to assume it is a 12 inch radius. So let's have a look at the strings. Glasses back on and we are going to set these two a 12 inch radius. Now, outside ones are fine. That's a, I'll tell you what, I've done pretty well with it. This one's a little high. But for the most part, these strings are set beautifully. I'm going to bring them a little bit higher than they ought to be, just so I can drop them onto the... you notice a little bit of sticky plaster hanging off my finger. That's because I sliced a portion of my finger off earlier with Stanley Blade. As you do. Messing about with super glue again. I've got super glue on my finger, so I thought I'd slice it off. Well, I wasn't paying proper attention. I sliced right into my finger and made a little... Little flappy door. As you do, I hate super glue. I think it knows I hate it. Right, there you go. So, just going to drop these strings to where that's good. That's good. That's high. So, if I drop these onto the top of the radius gauge, they'll be where they want to be. I'm hoping this is a 12 inch radius. I'm sure it will be. So that is pretty good. A nice radius. That means all of the strings, the radius here matches the radius here and the radius at the nut, or should do. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to straighten these blocks. So if one needs a quarter of a turn one way, I'm going to turn it a quarter turn the other. Same with this. We'll do a half a turn, now we'll do a quarter turn there, and a quarter turn down on this side. And that looks pretty much bang on. I quite like that. That's good. So pleased with that. So we'll check the tune in again. Someone gave me a bit of a rollicking on one of my videos not too long back, he was saying, don't touch the tremolo, it's factory set, if you touch it, you'll never get it right. And I'm thinking, he said, why did you touch it if it's factory set? And I said, because it wasn't set right. He never came back, but I'm sure he would have wanted to have said, the factory set it, you don't need to touch it. I'm thinking, okay. Wasn't set right, so I've done it. Right, that's pretty good. So again, I'll look at the action at the 12th fret. This is always a defining part. Right, okay. We are a tiny bit high on that side. We're 1.25 millimeters on the high E, and we are 1.5 on the low E. That is not too low, that is perfect. That is lower than I normally go. I normally go 1.75, 1.5. This is 1.5, 1.25. Very happy with that. Again, check the relief in the neck. <coughs> Seventh fret, I'm looking at 0.3 millimeters. See where we are. Tiny bit high. We are just going to give an eighth turn on the truss rod. About there, just nipped. That is just nipped. That's beautiful. That should be just about right. Good check again. All this rubbish about let's settle every night is complete rubbish. Your truss rod will move your neck straight away. Okay, 0.3 to the seventh. A little bit, tiny bit more of a knife. That is good. I'm happy with that. Again, check at the 12th fret. Try and do this. 1.5, 1.25, that is beautiful. We should not get any fret buzz or any notes fretting out anywhere. Let me just pick it up and have a little twinkle.
and that's it we've got no fretboards anyway that is beautiful i'm really happy with that so we now have everything set how we want so what i need to do now is I need to really stretch as much as i can out of these strings i'm going to do it off camera because it's going to take me quite a while once that is done we can come back and we can set this tremolo properly and i'll show you exactly how to do that i'm just going to show you why we need to stretch the strings right so slightly sharp e i'm going to stretch the strings there Stretch the strings here. That's now a C sharp. There you go. There you go. flat back to an E so I'm going to do this three or four times on each string until we have each one in tune once everyone is in tune it means we've stretched all the strings and we can come back and set the tremolo back soon okay so I've stretched the strings in I have the radius set on the saddles to match the neck and the nut um, the guitar is tuned to pitch strings are stretched like I've said um, the action at the 12th fret is exactly how I like it and we have the right amount of relief so the guitar is set up, strings are stretched, all we need to do now is to set the tremolo. What's going to happen is I'm going to remove the business cards from underneath the tremolo and all being well everything's going to come sharp. Let me just play a, there's an A note and now let's play the A note and that's a B flat and the D is an E flat and the G is a G sharp the B is a C and the E is almost, well it's not quite an F, but they're all, they've all gone quite sharp, but E is now a F. So what we need to do now is we need to set this level again and what we're going to do is, to get this in tune now is, we're going to go to the back of the guitar, like so, and we're going to loosen each of these screws until basically the tremolo is back horizontal and the A note is ringing, or, or the, once the A note is back in tune, or the A string is back in tune, all of the other strings it should be back in tune. So we're going to get it pretty close. That's still a B flat, so I'm going to basically, I'm going to drop these two screws, same amount each time, until we get close to an A. We're nowhere near close to an A yet. You see how it's going to work? And if we do this right, we may need a bit of tweaking. That is very, very close to an A. I think one little turn on that and a little turn higher on this and we're going to be there. Let's try it. That's a tiny bit short. So I'm going to, I'm going to you can't see. I'm going to get the guitar, you can see a little. I'm going to get the guitar back in the playing position and I'm going to try it from here. Quite a bit sharp on everything. The B and the E are just about there, the low E isn't, so I just need to tweak just a very small amount. And I'm going to go in on the treble side and out a touch on the bass side, and we're going to check again. And we're still a little sharp on the bass side. Very, very tiny amounts now. Tiny bit sharp on the bass side again. I'm just going to go tiny, tiny bit, and I think the rest we can do just on the tip tuners. It's good. And there you go. And that is it. The tremolo is now set. So let me just 
Move the tuner out of the way. Bring the guitar back. There is the guitar. Everything is set up. The bridge or tremolo is now perfectly horizontal and floating. And the guitar is in tune and it is ready to go. So I'm going to move the camera just a little. I'm not going back to the other I'm going to finish the video here for tonight because I don't really have the light in the other side of the room. I do have the new LED light just above up there shining on this area, which is perfect. So you're probably not going to see a great view of me, but you will see me and the guitar. So I said, oh, one thing else I wanted to mention, by the way, just before I go away, is this pickup. I didn't know where it was, and there's some markings on there. And I've just seen, and now I've cleaned the pickup up. It's a brush chrome. It is marked 57 stroke 08, and it's got the initials TM. I'm thinking that's Tim Mills, and this is a bare knuckle, and it's a 57 path type pickup. So it is Tim Mills's or bare knuckle slant on the Gibson 57. Uh, PAF patent applied for pickup. That is a bit of detective work. That's what I think it is. It most probably is. But anyway, like I said, I'm going to move the camera and uh, we're going to tie this video up. I'll tell you what, this angle is not so bad, is it? This is a different bench. This is my nighttime bench with the LED 2000 watt LED light up there. And it's, it, this, it's not so bad at all, is it? This used to be my fret leveling bench. It's like bench three or bench two, but there you go. Get back to this guitar, and I'm sorry about the light, it probably is really, really too bright, but the guitar is all done, and what a beautiful thing. And it is a PRS, or Paul Reed Smith Studio. I don't know if it's a deluxe, or a custom, or whatever, but certainly it looks like a custom bare knuckle pickup in there. 57 stroke 08, then the initials TM on there, Tim Mills. So I would be thinking, and these pickles have all these mini humbuckers in there. It's got to be a custom model, surely. It's not standard, this, is it? It's got to be a custom model. But anyway, get back to what it is. Inlays, very special inlays as well. They're different. Uh, they don't normally come on a regular model, do they? So I think it's some kind of custom. It's got a push-pull. Well, it didn't have a push-pull. It's now a push-push pot there for the humbucker splittable. A very, very nice thing. I would be guessing hip shot type tuners, glued in neck, beautiful guitar, a nice uh, triple grade A flame maple cap on there. What a beautiful thing. I'd guess the rest of the wood is mahogany. What a beautiful guitar. Uh, really, really nice, but it is all done. Um, of course, it's going to be basically just a simple setup with a new pot in there, but this has had about three and a half hours today, this guitar. Um, and it's a beautiful thing. Didn't need a lot of work, it just what it did need to do, it needed to be done right. So a beautiful thing. So the owner is on the way to collect this and another guitar. He had also sent me a 2005 Fender Standard Strat, which had a complete refret and it had some network. He spent a lot of money on two guitars, but I'm sure he's gonna be happy. This needed no fret work, which is fantastic. I don't get that many guitars in that don't need any fret work, so I'm really pleased with this. Anyway, PRS, Studio, year, it's got a serial number, it is, basically it's got two numbers, then it's got six numbers, and the first two numbers are 11, so it's got 2011, surely, and a six figure number on there, and it's got a number 10 in the top right corner in gold lettering, I don't know what that means, I've got no idea, but anyway, a beautiful thing, a very, very well made guitar, Beautiful low action, a little bit more relief than I'd use, but the action is beautifully low. Everything is set up right. The tremolo is floating. It plays like a dream. There's no fretboards anywhere. It's just fantastic. So, all done. Um, I am going to be knocked off for the day. I'm going to take the dog for a walk. He's been itching for a walk for about three hours, that dog. I've not had no lunch today. All I've eaten today is five chocolate biscuits. That is it. That's how busy I have been in this workshop. I've only just had my second drink of the day, a cup of tea over there, which I made about 4.30 p.m. So I have earned a cup of tea. I've earned a beer. It is Friday evening. It is about 5.30, 5.45 in the evening. Project is done. So until the next time, just before I go, reminding my website, facebook.com forward slash ng17. That's facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. My name is Victor. I am your fret friend. And until the next time, God bless you. Be good to each other. And I will see you next time.